I remember when I got into Linux, I was wondering why does everyone actually use Arch Linux? Because that was the first thing that I basically used to be honest. Like I tried out Linux Mint on a VM, but real quickly, once I got into Arch Linux, like I kind of just dived headfirst into it. I was like, but why does everyone use Arch Linux? And like, I understand why I use it, but like it, it seems extremely popular. And I was thinking about it, I'm like, you know what? It kind of actually makes sense. I think the thing that made me realize is that if you're willing enough to try out Linux, to even like possibly remove Windows just so that you can store a whole new operating system to try it out just for fun, it's very likely you're like a bit of a geek, a bit of a nerd. So I feel like once you're that much of a nerd to want to try out a whole new operating system, like most people be like, who cares? But you've like researched like, oh, okay, there's actually some benefits of using like free and open source software and, you know, this and that. It's very likely that you tend to care about like minimalism, you know, like using your computer as much as possible and being like a power user, so and so. So then you hear about a distribution called Archonix, which is minimalist, which is clean, but it's fast, it's binary. And it's also considered like what the power users use, you know, it's what all the, you know, hard, high intellectual Linux users use. So I think genuinely, like, I think that's the reason, you know, obviously you can say stuff like, oh, it's the AUR and this and that, but to be like, I'm going to be honest for myself, I didn't start using Arch Linux just because there's an AUR. Like now I can see the benefits of the AUR. And I think the AUR is, you know, compared to other distributions, seriously, that is why Arch Linux, like the AUR, we also got the documentation, the fact that it's just super minimal. Obviously, like my, like I'm looking right here, like my install is like pretty actually bloated now. I'm looking at it, 1500 packages. I don't know. I don't even know how I have so many packages. But, you know, overall, looking back on it, I think genuinely there are some extremely good benefits. But I think because it has this reputation of being the power user distribution, that's why everyone uses it. I mean, that's why I used it. I used it because the people that I was watching at the time, like a uh, mental outlaw and bugs writer, they were all using arch. So I'm like, Oh, well that's the, that's the cool boys. That's the big boys, you know, distribution. So I may as well use it myself, but really looking at it, I genuinely think that arch is just the most superior distribution. I mean, compared to let's say gen two, gen two is like arch, but like next level instead of binary packages, you have compile, like you have to compile all the packages yourself, which is just, too much it's too much for me it's too much to just to download firefox you have to spend four days it's just and you know when you look at it, it seems like most people go through the route of you know ubuntu they try it out you know gnome all that but they realize like oh you know there's like so much bloat there's so much stuff that like it's just kind of annoying like snaps i never put i think i use i try to use a snap package once because i was trying to download spotify this is before i really knew the aur like that well like i was just trying to do it for that and it was just it was just a pain and you know i don't have that much experience but i've always heard like it's just horrible so you, you have these annoyances in every other distribution even stuff like that are based of arch like manjaro i'm pretty sure manjaro is also considered a very annoying operating system that most people actually don't recommend you know if we actually open up i've got an image right here that'll be interesting i think it was called linux list of distros we have the list of distros in order and we can see there's two ways it's ranked. It's either ranked through Google Trends or DistroWatch. And I think Google Trends matches probably the most popular. So we have Ubuntu, CentOS, Debian, Kali, Linux, Mint, and then Arch. And I think this is about accurate. I think this is about accurate. DistroWatch ranked it as number 15. But if we really look at it, it seems like, yeah, you know what? Arch is actually that popular. More popular than something like Fedora, Red Hat, like all this other stuff. I'm going to be honest. I'm not even really that familiar with it. Like, I know Martin, like I'm the Linux YouTuber that knows a lot, but to be honest, I really only know Arch. I don't really know anything else. And even then I wouldn't say that I'm like a professional. I just, I just know what I need to know to get everything working, to be honest. But I think also despite Arch being a very popular choice between users, I don't think it will ever be bigger than the rest of these distributions because the rest of these distributions, I don't really know anything about CentOS, but the rest of these have very specific purposes that I think outweigh the benefits of Arch. For example, Ubuntu and Debian, I think will always be very popular. Ubuntu, you have to understand, there are some people that use Linux like us that just like it. They they think it's, you know, it's a bit of a hobby and they see the benefits in Linux. A lot of people will also have to use Linux and will just choose Ubuntu because they work in like engineering or something like that. They're basically forced to and they don't really care. Like they're like, oh, okay, it's like, it's like Windows, but a little bit different. They don't really care about it though.
and with debian you know i think most servers are debian correct me if i'm wrong like most servers are debian so and, and there's a specific reason why debian is just very stable obviously for a user experience that might not be what you want but when you're running a server you don't really care about getting updates to be honest you might never actually update it unless you have to and again kali is not like a like it's like kind of like an os but i don't think anyone uses that like an os it's more like it has a very specific tool set for like penetration testing and all that and yeah it has a very specific purpose i don't think it's something that anyone just uses like that but i feel like when you actually trickle down you know then you get to like linux mint yeah Linux Mint makes sense as like kind of like the beginner, like just like Windows like operating system. And then Arch is like, once you get there, is like a proper like you customize, you build your operating system. But overall, that is just my thoughts about it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe. It helps me out. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.